You're about to drop $2,000 on an OLED TV with the most gorgeous picture you've ever seen in a store. Then you Google OLED burn-in, and suddenly you're watching horror stories of screens ruined by CNN tickers and video game health bars. Ever wonder if those internet nightmares are actually going to happen to your brand new TV? Today I'll explain OLED burn-in like you're five years old. By the end, you'll understand exactly whether this issue should stop you from buying an OLED based on how you actually use your screen or if the panic is mostly outdated fear from early technology that manufacturers have now addressed. Let's start with what burn-in actually is, mechanically speaking. OLED screens work differently than the LCD TV hanging in your living room right now. LCD uses a backlight that shines through colored filters. Those filters don't wear out from use, but OLED pixels create their own light by literally glowing. Each pixel is a tiny organic light that turns on and off millions of times. And here's the physics problem. Bright pixels that glow constantly for thousands of hours will dim faster than pixels showing varied content. When a bright red health bar sits in the same corner for 3,000 hours, those red pixels age faster than the rest of the screen. When you finally watch something else, you see a ghost image where that health bar used to be. That's burn-in. It's not a manufacturing defect. It's physics wearing down organic materials over time. The dimming is permanent because those organic compounds have degraded at a molecular level. Now here's what changed. The OLED horror stories you're reading online mostly come from 2017 to 2020. Those early models had almost no protection against static images. But TV manufacturers knew burn-in was their biggest reputation problem. So newer OLEDs from 2022 onward have aggressive countermeasures built in. Pixel shifting moves the entire image by a few pixels every few minutes, so static logos never sit perfectly still. Logo dimming detects bright stationary elements and automatically reduces their brightness by up to 50%. Screen savers kick in if you pause Netflix for 10 minutes. And every OLED now runs automatic pixel refresh cycles that recalibrate brightness across the whole screen. These features don't eliminate burn-in risk, but they dramatically slow it down. We're talking years instead of months. Independent testing from Artings ran six TVs for 20,000 hours with punishing content. Only the absolute worst-case scenario of static news channels showed severe burn-in. Mixed content resulted in minimal to zero visible degradation, even after simulating five years of heavy use. Burn-in isn't binary. It's not like your screen is perfect one day and ruined the next. It's a gradual dimming that happens so slowly you barely notice until it's severe. And severity depends entirely on what you watch and for how long. Think of OLED pixels like light bulbs. If you leave the same light on 24 hours a day, it burns out faster than bulbs you only use at night. Static bright images accelerate aging. Varied content spreads the wear across all pixels evenly. Your usage pattern determines whether your OLED lasts three years or 15. So let's talk about your actual viewing habits. If you're a movie watcher, you're golden. Movies constantly change scenes, colors, and brightness. No part of the screen stays bright for long. Same for TV shows, YouTube, or streaming sports. The content moves around, your pixels age evenly. Even after five years of heavy movie watching, most users report zero visible burn-in. The same goes for casual gamers who play different games with varied HUDs. When you switch from racing games to adventure titles to shooters, no single UI element stays in place long enough to cause damage. But here's where it gets tricky. If you play one specific game for six hours every single day, and that game has a bright static HUD that never moves, you're in the danger zone. Games like FIFA with scoreboards, or RPGs with health bars locked in the corner, or competitive shooters with mini-maps can cause problems. Not immediately, not even in six months, but after two or three years of hardcore daily play, you might start seeing faint outlines. This is especially true for competitive players grinding ranked modes where identical UI elements appear in every single match. And if you're someone who leaves CNBC or ESPN on for 10 hours a day as background noise, those bright tickers and logos are the absolute worst case scenario for OLED. The constant white text on bright red banners never moves, never dims, and hammers the same pixels relentlessly. The industry knows gamers are a huge market, 
So newer OLED models and gaming monitors now include specific gaming modes that aggressively dim HUD elements and run pixel refresh more often. Some even let you manually shift the screen position during long sessions. LG's latest models have a feature that moves everything by four pixels in random directions every two minutes during gameplay. And here's the other option, QD OLED. That's Quantum.OLED, which uses slightly different materials that resist burn-in better than traditional OLED. Samsung's QD OLED TVs are specifically marketed to gamers because of this enhanced longevity. And if you're truly paranoid, many LED TVs offer nearly OLED level picture quality with zero burn-in risk because they still use a backlight. You sacrifice some contrast in black levels, but you gain total peace of mind. Here's what matters to your decision. OLED burn-in is real, but for 90% of normal users, it's no longer a practical concern. If you watch varied content, change channels regularly, don't pause on static screens for hours, and let the TV run its maintenance cycles, you'll likely never see burn-in in the TV's entire lifespan. Most people replace their TVs every seven to 10 years anyway. OLED technology will outlast your desire to upgrade. The people experiencing severe burn-in are edge cases, 24-hour news watchers, streamers who broadcast the same game 12 hours daily, retail stores that loop the same demo video forever, airport displays showing static flight boards. These are commercial use cases, not home viewing. But if you are a hardcore gamer who plays the same title obsessively, or if you genuinely leave cable news on all day every day, then yes, consider burn-in seriously. Either rotate your content more, use screensavers religiously, manually enable all the protection features, or just buy a mini LED instead. There's no shame in choosing the safer technology if your habits genuinely put you at risk. The goal isn't to own an OLED. The goal is to own a screen you'll love without anxiety. And here's the business reality behind all this. OLED manufacturers offer warranties now that specifically cover burn-in for the first few years. LG, Sony, and Samsung all have protection policies because they know if they don't, people won't buy. That tells you something important. These companies have data on failure rates. They wouldn't offer warranties if burn-in was happening constantly. They've done the math. For most users, the risk is low enough that covering it costs them almost nothing. LG's warranty data from 2023 showed burn-in claims represented less than 2% of all OLED warranty issues. One more thing. The internet amplifies disasters. Nobody posts online saying, I've had my OLED for four years and it still looks perfect. But the moment someone sees a faint ghost image, they're uploading photos and warning the world. This creates a distorted perception where it seems like every OLED burns in. It doesn't. The silent majority of OLED owners are perfectly happy and never encounter issues. You're just not hearing from them because happy people don't write reviews. So to recap, OLED burn-in happens when static bright images sit in the same spot for thousands of hours, dimming those pixels faster than the rest. Newer OLEDs have pixel shifting, logo dimming, and refresh cycles that slow this way down. If you watch movies, shows, YouTube, or play varied games, you're almost certainly safe even after five plus years. If you're a hardcore one game player or 24 hour news watcher, the risk is real, but still slow. QD OLED and mini LED are safer alternatives if you're in that category. For 90% of people, OLED burn-in is no longer a practical concern. Don't let fear of a rare outcome rob you of the best picture quality available. The technology has matured. The protections work. The warranties exist. So here's what I want to know. If you own an OLED right now, how many hours of daily use have you put on it? What content do you watch most? And have you seen any burn-in yet? And if you've been avoiding OLED because of burn-in fears, What's your specific use case that makes you hesitate?